This is a really important part to understanding Spiral Jetty because it's the place where in 1869, um, just after the Civil War, the last spike was made on the Transcontinental Railroad. Um, it was a huge occasion, really monumentous. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back for the 4.30 departure of the Jupiter back to the Mission House. Before we get started, I want to go over safety concerns with everybody. I want to stay 15 feet back from the tracks, so if you're sitting on the bench, it's perfectly fine. If you want to be standing, then stand behind the barrels. If you want to stand out in the field, then behind the railroad ties out there. Oh, sorry. I thought that was what you meant, was the railroad tracks over there. Oh, the, the field over there. The, the oh. Yeah. It was worth it. Is the Jupiter is going to be backing up. And the reason why it's backing up is because this is the Central Pacific Ocean. So it has to come from the west. So it's going to back up, stop, and then pull forward past this. And then actually pass us pretty rapidly. It's pretty amazing how fast it is. Uh, pass us uh, back to the house. And it's up there. Okay. So it was this on, it was on this day, May 10th, 1869, in which they placed four ceremonial spikes into the world with tie. They gently tapped those and then immediately took them out because they're precious metals and then replaced it with a regular tie and regular iron spikes to finish the job. Huh? Uh, and was that at that point where our country was united because before that we were not united. Uh, if it takes four to six months for you to go from one side of the country to the other, you are not united. So you had two options for that. You could go by boat or you could go by the wagon. Hope would take you about four to six months. On May 11th, 1869, it would take you two weeks to get across the country, which is remarkably better, not just in time, but also in money as well. So everybody look up to the flag. Uh, anybody count how many stars there are on there? I'll give you a hint, there's 20. Uh, so how many states were there in 1869? Any guesses? Close, there are 37. Uh, so there were representatives from both companies out here. There was the President of the Central Pacific, Leland Stanford, the Vice President of the Union Pacific, Dr. Thomas C. Durant. There was an infantry regiment out here. There was uh, a band with the regiment. There was a band from Salt Lake City out here. And plus way a lot of people, hundreds of people. All those people, nobody remembered to bring an American flag. Minor, minor oversight. Uh, but luckily there is a man who was in the 21st uh, infantry, and he had in his knapsack a American flag. It was a family heirloom, uh, 20 stars on it, and he donated it to the ceremony. So that's why we fly a 20 star flag today. Uh, the last time America had 20 stars on its flag was in 1819, so we were only off by a few years. Eighteen sixty-nine. After the Civil War. Uh, another thing to uh, uh, keep keep in mind is that when the Jupiter uh, departs the station, we're the station right here. Uh, and then when it comes back into the station, it's going to let off a series of bells and whistles. All of the bells and whistles. Uh, so if you're uh, sensitive hearing, then be mindful of that. Right, so that's that's a good that's a good question. So if anybody, anybody be, have gone to Yellowstone recently? Does that smell familiar? 
Uh, so all the wood and all the trees that get knocked down to the storms are, are in the way in Yellowstone around the campsites and the visitor center. Uh, those are given to us. So the Central Pacific, they uh, they burned wood uh, and they got wood from California, so they would just ship that along the line. Uh, you've been warned, Jupiter, you have the eyeball. Pacific. They had to go through a lot to get to this point. Uh, so when they started Sacramento, they were building for a few miles out of Sacramento. It was all going perfectly well until they ran into this problem called the Sierra Nevada. Uh, they had to go uh, dig and tunnel and blast their way through solid granite. And that was a real issue because they were making a good day was eight inches a day, uh, which was not ideal. It took them two years to get through the Sierra Nevada, inch by inch, and they had to cross the alkaline deserts of Nevada, and then just a few miles from here, they were able to do 10 miles in a single day laying down a track. So you got a, a company here in the span of, of six years in which it takes them to build it. They were able to go from eight inches a day to 10 miles in one day. Uh, so that's, that's pretty remarkable. How much they had to go for. Uh, yeah, so the reason why you're in Promontory Summit right now uh, is because these grading parties, so the grade is the rocks, the roadbed that it's, that it's on, those are built hundreds of miles out ahead of where they're actually laying the truck. And you're also paid by the mile. Uh, so they would build hundreds of miles ahead, and at some point they met each other and then passed each other, and then went hundreds of miles in each direction past each other. Uh, the Railroad Acts of 1862, 1864, and 1866 told two companies to build a transcontinental railroad that said nothing about meeting each other. So I guess they assumed that they would just, when they met each other, they would just stop. But there was money involved, so they did not. Yeah, there was a feeling that... Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We invite you to the Visitor Center main auditorium for the last presentation of the Golden Spike movie. This 20-minute film details the building of our nation's first transcontinental railroad and its completion here at Promontory Summit on May 10, 1869. The Golden Spike movie will start now in the main auditorium next to the exhibit area. Thank you. So they, they figured that if they just kept on building, maybe Congress would kick their...